Now, this next job is really more working on the workshop than in the workshop, and it's going to be one of those little jobs which is on a massive long list of unfinished things to do on our mezzanine. Now, many of you would have seen Mr C and myself slaving away on this ridiculous structure during lockdown. And it all started, really, with this big circular disc. It was a second-hand show stand. It came with this amazing spiral staircase. As soon as we'd seen it, we had to have it. But unfortunately, when I started putting it up, it was a bit too low, so I had to raise it by about a foot, which meant, of course, that the stairs no longer reached the ground so I had to add a couple more steps on the bottom there and then we carried on working with all the other bits and pieces that we could get hold of so we got hold of some second-hand industrial flooring to put up there even some second-hand carpet tiles as well now the whole point of the mezzanine wasn't just to waste valuable time and we had far more important things to do during lockdown no it was to create an alternative space in the workshop a haven a sanctuary a place where things are a little bit different It's really a change of gear for your head, somewhere to contemplate big dreams and great ideas. A place to plan your next grand project, especially the ones that are never going to see the light of day. It's my procrastination space. And because of that, it obviously has to be comfortable and cosy. It's a place to hang with your mates, hence lots of sofas, just in case I do get inspired to do a bit of work. Obviously, we've got some desks over there. And eventually, one day, we're going to actually cover our wonderful petrol blue wall with books and TVs and all kinds of other exciting things. We're even going to have a bar at some point. But that is the thing. Because this is a procrastination space, nothing is quite yet finished. And so I really should crack on with my next job, which is to finish off my balustrade. Now, because our mezzanine is so far off the ground, obviously had to be nice and safe and put up a balustrade. And I couldn't help but go for a bit of stainless steel because it adds a nice bit of bling to the whole place. And of course, it's going to outlive not only the mezzanine, but also the entire building as well. But the thing about it is, because of all the curves of our mezzanine, rather than having facets, I went for some custom bent tubing to go for the top rails. Now, the one for the front of the mezzanine, well, that actually came in two pieces, had to be welded together. The one for the rear here also came in two pieces, but I've got to cut that up further to actually get it to fit into each of these sections. And that is my next job. So the idea, I have this stainless steel knuckle here, and that's going to just sit like so, connecting to this beam, this radial beam there, and this little chap here is going to be about there or so. So what I need to do is just cut this tubing down, and so I need to mark this out. So just a little bit of masking tape, a bit of pen, and shouldn't take that long. So there we go. Doesn't really matter where I put this, because I'm just going to then mark it out afterwards. So we'll be a little bit careful because it's just balancing on the rest of the poles at the moment. It's not actually attached. So then I'm just going to mark that out by eye. So I'm just making sure I'm dead above the seam. So I'm just checking on both sides. So there's definitely no chance of any parallax issues. Now I've got my two marks, one either side, I now need to make a little hoop. And obviously I need to make sure it's pretty accurate because obviously whether I cut it with a power saw or even just an angle grinder, I want to make sure I have a nice square edge when it comes up to this knuckle. Now you could use perhaps like some kind of hose clip perhaps and wrap it around, or you could use all kinds of other things. I'm just going to use a little bit of card here. Just literally whiz that all the way around and make sure that the card is square. I mean, you could even do this with just the masking tape itself. So now I'm happy that I've got in the right place. I'm just going to make sure, yet again, that when it's on the knuckle, it looks pretty good, which it does. And then I can literally now just draw around that all the way. In the comfort of the fact that it's hopefully now going to be a nice square edge. Oops. So now we've done that, I'll just mark out the others and get cutting.
So here we go. This is our first long length. Slots onto there, rests on there, and the last bit, of course, is this, this T piece, like so. And that should sit on there. Now, a bit later on, I'll get round to actually attaching these little tops onto there and gluing everything together. But before I do that, I want to now see how everything else is looking. Right, so the last piece. Oh, well, that is a wonderful fit for one thing, but it now looks absolutely fantastic. And once I've glued it all together and given it a nice kind of dressing with a bit of 320 grit wet and dry and some oil just to get rid of those forming scratches, this is ready for the next stage. And the next stage is a whopping great piece of shaped glass. A couple of stools will then have a bar that is a job for another day. Thanks for stopping by the workshop. If you enjoyed the video even just a little bit, then click like. If you hated it, well then click like three times. Also remember to leave your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And obviously we'd love to see you again soon, so please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell for notifications of when the next video is published, or when I have some intriguing news.